In this video tutorial, I will be looking at 2.6 combination of transformations. Before we look at this crispy topic, it is very useful to recap the individual transformations. Have a look at these individual transformations. The first one, we take the graph f of x and shift the a units upwards. Next, take the graph f of x, shift the a units downwards. Then, you take the graph f of x, shift the a units to the left. Take the graph f of x, shift the a units to the right. Over here, you multiply the x coordinates by 1 over a, keeping the y coordinates the same. In this case, you keep the x coordinates the same and multiply the y coordinates by a. This one over here, minus f of x. You have to reflect the graph f of x in the x axis. And the last one is f in bracket minus x. You take the graph f of x and reflect it in the y axis. Okay, so these are the individual transformations. Now, ladies and gents, we are going to move on to combination of transformations. So over here, we have a combination of transformations. What we have to do is follow the bid mass structure. Brackets, indices, divide, multiply, add, subtract. So first of all, we focus on the bracket. We multiply b by x or bx. So in this case, what you have to do is take the x coordinates and multiply them by 1 over b, keeping the y coordinates the same. Once you have done that, you need to look at the next transformation plus c. So you take your graph of f of bx and you shift it c units to the left. Once you've done that, you've got the graph of f of bx plus c. To get the graph of a, f of bx plus c, remember a is the next step, that's the third step using bid mass. What you have to do is take the graph of f of bx plus c and multiply the y coordinates by a, keeping the x coordinates the same. Once you have obtained the graph of a, f of bx plus c, the final step is to obtain the graph of a, f of bx plus c plus d. Now this plus d is the fourth step, okay, in bid mass. So you add at the end. Right. So what you have to do to obtain the graph of a, f of bx plus c plus d is you take the graph of a, f of bx plus c and you shift it d units upwards. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So you've got four different transformations and the order is one, two, three, four using bid mass. Let's have a look at example number one. Here we have a past exam question. This over here is a sketch of y equal f of x. We've got the turning point a and we've got the y intercept. We need to sketch on separate axes the graph of each of the following. On each sketch, show the coordinates of the point at which a graph intersects the y-axis and the coordinates of the point to which A is transformed. Okay, when I have a combination of transformations, I have to use bid mass. Right, so using the bid mass rule, I can obtain a set of transformation for my combination of transformations. So, for y equal f of minus x plus 1, the first step is to take f of x and reflect it in the y-axis. Then you take your new graph and shift it 1 unit upwards. For the next one, y equal f of x plus 2 plus 3, the first step is to take your graph y equal f of x and shift it two units to the left. Once you obtain that graph, you take the graph and you shift it three units upwards to get this particular graph. Right, the third one is y equal 2f of 2x. Okay, the very first step is to apply the transformation f of 2x using the fact that b comes first in bid mass brackets. Okay, f of 2x, what you have to do there is take the x coordinates and multiply them by 1 over 2, keeping the y coordinates the same. 
Once you obtain the graph of f of 2x, you can then obtain the graph of 2 f of 2x by taking f of 2x and multiplying the y coordinates by 2, keeping the x coordinates the same. Right, so those are the steps that you need to follow. Over here, I've got the graph f of minus x. This is my new y-intercept. This is my new point A. Okay, right. Over here, I've got the graph of f of minus x plus 1. This is my new y-intercept and this is my new point A. This graph over here is my final answer. The next one. I've got the graph of f of x plus 2. The new y-intersect is 0, 3. And the new point A is also 0, 3. Okay. Here is my graph f of x plus 2 plus 3. The new y-intersect is 0, 6. And the new point A is also 0, 6. This is my final answer. Here is the solution to part 3. This is my graph of f of 2x. The y-intersect stays the same. Here is my new point A, 1, 3. This is the graph of 2, f of 2x. The y-intersect is now 2 and the new point A is 1, 6. This is my final answer. Right, okay, now let's move on to example number 2. Here's another past exam question. We've got a sketch of y equal f of x and we've got a maximum turning point m. Sketch on separate diagrams the graphs of each of the following. Okay, right. So, for part A, we need to take the graph f of x and shift it three units upwards. No problem. Light work. For part B, we've got the modulus outside the function. So, anything below the x-axis gets reflected in the x-axis. And part C, we've got the modulus inside the function. So in this case, we have to sketch the graph for x is greater than or equal to 0 and then take our sketch and reflect it in the y-axis. Don't forget to show on each graph the coordinates of any maximum turning points. So for part A, this is the graph that I obtain. The new turning point M is 2, 7. Here is the graph for part B. The modulus is outside the function. So what I did was, anything below the x-axis are reflected in the x-axis. Here is the graph for part C. The modulus was inside the function. So all I had to do is sketch the graph for x is greater than or equal to 0. So if I do that, I get this part over here. And then all I had to do is take this part over here and reflect it in the y-axis to obtain this part and that there is my graph of f of modulus of x and that there is the end of 2.6 combination of transformations if you found this video tutorial useful don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel peace